Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Gauss's lemma. Okay, so, in this next video we're going to look at an interesting corollary of Gauss's lemma, uh, which is going to follow very naturally uh, from Gauss's lemma. So Gauss's lemma is all about when you can say a polynomial is reducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. This corollary is all going to be all about when you can say it's irreducible. Okay, so, once again, we're going to be working with our unique factorization domain and with polynomials in the ring of polynomials over that unique factorization domain. So let's say p of x is a polynomial in this ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. So where the coefficients are in the unique factorization domain are here. Okay, so um, in order for this theorem to work, in order for this corollary to work, this polynomial has to be rather special. Okay, so this is only going to apply for polynomials that are what are known as primitive. Okay, now primitive, there are two parts to primitive. Firstly, we want it to be non-constant. Okay, so that's an easy part to understand. We're getting rid of all the boring polynomials. Uh, we want it to be a non-constant polynomial. So a primitive polynomial is a non-constant polynomial. That's absolutely fine. The second bit is the more important bit. The second bit uh, concerns common divisors of all of the coefficients of this polynomial. Okay, it concerns what constants you can pull out of the polynomial. And it's best seen if I write the polynomial out explicitly, so I'll do this here. So let's say our polynomial p of x here, uh, explicitly written out is p0 plus p1x, and let's go all the way up to pn x to the n. So let's say this polynomial has degree n here. Okay, now, if this polynomial is a primitive polynomial, I want it to be the case that the only common divisor of all of the coefficients of the uh, polynomial here is a unit, okay? I want it to be the case that you cannot factor out anything, any constant that is not a unit, okay? So if you write this as a constant times a polynomial uh, of degree n, then that constant must be a unit, is what I'm saying here, okay? Uh, to put this even more explicitly, if you actually were to factorize all of these coefficients down into their factorizations into irreducibles, which you can do because the coefficient ring is a unique factorization domain, then there would be no common irreducibles that are in all of their irreducible factorizations, okay? So you can only factor out a unit, that's the only common divisor of all all of these um, coefficients. Okay, uh, so I hope this should be intuitive in the context of the uh, ring of polynomials over the integers. So for instance, if I take a polynomial like 2x squared plus 4x plus 8, that would not be a primitive polynomial because I could factor out the constant 2, and of course that is not one of the units. That is not 1 or negative 1. Okay, so that would not be a primitive polynomial. A primitive polynomial would be one where I could only factor out the constant 1 or negative 1. 1 and negative 1 were the only common divisors of all of the uh, coefficients uh, of the polynomial. Okay, so that's the definition of a primitive polynomial, one for which the only common divisors of all of the um, coefficients um, of the polynomial are the units in the unique factorization domain. Okay, right. So here comes the actual theorem then. So the theorem is that this polynomial, p of x, will be irreducible, okay? So it's all about saying whether or not it's irreducible in the uh, ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. It will be irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the, irre uh, sorry, over the unique factorization domain if and only if, okay? So this works both ways. So if and only if it is irreducible in the uh, ring of polynomials over the fraction field, f adjoin x here. Okay, and note, you can only do this if your polynomial is a primitive polynomial. It doesn't work for non-primitive polynomials. You can't conclude this uh, if you're working with a non-primitive polynomial. Okay, so basically what we want to prove then is that these two are totally equivalent for primitive polynomials, i.e. that uh, if it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, capital F, then you can conclude that it will be irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, okay? And the only if, 
it effectively is equivalent to saying that if it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials uh, over the unique factorization domain, it's also irreducible uh, in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Now, one of these is actually extremely easy, and it's this one here, okay, uh, because this is actually just Gauss's lemma, okay? If it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, I claim you can instantly uh, conclude that it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Now, why can you do that? Well, Gauss's lemma, remember, says that a polynomial uh, p of x, and it didn't need to be a primitive polynomial, it just needed to be a non-constant polynomial, uh, will be uh, reducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain if it's reducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. If we're now saying that it's irreducible here, then it cannot possibly re be reducible over here, because if it's reducible here, we have shown by Gauss's lemma that it will be reducible here. Okay, so it must be the case that if it's irreducible here, it must have to be irreducible over here, otherwise Gauss's lemma would be false. Okay, because Gauss's lemma would then imply that if it was reducible over here, it would have to be reducible here, okay, which is a contradiction. So that one is fine. The only if is absolutely fine. That's just Gauss's lemma. So we've done the only only if, now we need to address this bit, and this is the bit that requires it to be primitive. Okay, so we want to show that if it's irreducible here, it implies that it's irreducible here. And the easiest way to show that is to show that if it's reducible here, then it's reducible here. Okay, uh, because if it's reducible here, if, if that's true, that if it's reducible here, it's reducible here, then if it's irreducible here, it will have to be irreducible here. Okay, so we're doing it the same way as we proved this one, by sort of inverting the statement, basically. Okay, so what I'm going to prove is that if it's reducible here, it has to be reducible here. Hence, if it's irreducible here, it cannot be reducible here, and therefore must be irreducible. Okay, so that's the way I'm going to do this. So let's start uh, by assuming that p of x, this primitive polynomial, is reducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Okay, so that means it can be written as the product of two polynomials that are not units. Okay, so a of x times b of x here. Okay, and the key thing here is that these are not units. So this is if we're assuming that p of x is reducible in the ring of polynomials uh, where the coefficients are from the unique factorization domain r here. Okay? So both of these polynomials, a of x here and b of x, these are from the ring of polynomials um, with coefficients in the unique factorization domain r adjoin x here. Okay, so where are we going to go from here? Well, we need to now prove that it's going to be reducible in f adjoin x. Now, there is something that we can actually conclude about these polynomials a of x and b of x here. Okay, what can we conclude about them? We can conclude that neither of them are constant polynomials. Okay, so we know that they're not units, but I claim that we can conclude that they're non-constant, and this is because of the fact that the polynomial p of x is reduce, uh, sorry, is primitive. Okay, if one of these was a constant, let's say a, then we know that um, it's not a unit. Okay, so a is not a unit. That's this statement here. Otherwise, this wouldn't be uh, a product of two non-unit elements. Okay, which we assumed we could do because this was reducible. So if this is not a unit, I've written p of x as a constant times b of x, and b of x will have to have the same degree as p of x. But that means that I have factored out a constant that is not a unit. That contradicts it being primitive, basically. A would have been a common divisor that is not a unit of all of the coefficients of p of x. Okay, so this would contradict it uh, being primitive. Okay, and that's where primitive is going to come in, to conclude that both of these polynomials, a of x and b of x, are non-constant polynomials. And why is it so important to now conclude that they're non-constant polynomials? Well, now... Let's go over into the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, capital F. Of course, all of these polynomials, p of x, a of x, and b of x, these are all in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, because all of their coefficients are just in the unique factorization domain, and the unique factorization domain is part of the fraction field. So this is a perfectly valid statement in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, but now look what I've got here. I've got my polynomial p of x written as 
the product of two non-constant polynomials. And I know that non-constant polynomials in the ring of polynomials over a field are not units, okay? Remember, in a ring of polynomials over a field, all of the uh, constant polynomials are units, except the zero polynomial, uh, and then all of the non-constant polynomials, those are not units, okay? That's true in an arbitrary integral domain, that any non-constant polynomial is not a unit, and fields are certainly integral domains, okay? So that means that I have got two non-unit polynomials multiplying together to give p of x, okay? That's exactly the definition of p of x being uh, reducible in f of x, that I've got two non-unit elements multiplying together to make it. So, of course, p of x is reducible in the ring of polynomials uh, over this fraction field. Okay, and it totally relied on the primitive nature of this so that I could make this conclusion that these two polynomials were non-constant. That's where this would fall down if it weren't for the fact that that polynomial was primitive. Okay, because if we couldn't show that these were con not non-constant polynomials, then we couldn't conclude that they're not units in the uh, ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, so primitive was absolutely essential here. Okay, so what we've now shown is that if it's reducible here, then it's reducible here. So if it's irreducible here, it cannot have been reducible here. Okay, so it must be irreducible here. So indeed, we have now shown that. Okay, so we have now shown then that if you have a polynomial uh, which is primitive in your uh, ring of polynomials over your unique factorization domain, then it will be irreducible if and only if it is irreducible in the uh, ring of polynomials over the fraction field, and that is a very useful corollary of Gauss's lemma.